a kero mai tātou a a koaio a ko te hina re tuku ingoa a ki te tuku papa a te teori o a ngati wai a ki te tuku mama a no hoki anga a no te a e hapu o te popoto uh kia ora everybody my name is um Joe Hinari i um currently reside in the uh, um te pu o te whiki, um in the beautiful place of kai kohi kohi um the i run and own and operate i don't know if if i own it <laughs> um we have but i have a fare hauora so for those of you who do not know um patu kai kohi is a social enterprise um uh, where our outcomes are not monetary based but um based around the 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 well-being of of um uh, of of kai kohi uh i started um up with my cousin um richie koroi uh, he rang me up and he goes oh cuz you know it's one of, it's, it's one of those funny moments in your life where your where your your cousin has one of these ideas and he goes oh bro we need to get into social enterprise and we need to uplift our whanau and you know and those of you who know my cousin uh, Richie he's, he's got a he's, you know he's got a he's got an awesome way of talking and so you know he got me in and and we we looked at the 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 physical and mental and health well-being of of our community and i started digging into numbers so um in kaikohe we have around about 7000 people um 77% of those are maori and over half of them are obese so if you do the quick math it's about 3500 people who uh where um obesity and obesity related diseases affect the everyday lives um and and mostly you know eight times out of 10 ends up killing them um for me i came from um big business gyms so i learned my craft and learned uh everything i needed to know through um you know um high school and university and then later on went into um big corporate gyms and one day i was there teaching a class and and it was about 109 people in that class and i was going wow this is awesome look at it the, all the people that i'm helping look at them yeah, there's uh, john over there steve hey go shirley yeah he's doing awesome and then i started feeding back into you know what 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 was i doing what am i actually up to i really wanted to help um Maori people to 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 make better health decisions and so therefore I scanned the room I go oh, okay cool let's see how many um let's see how many Maori we have in the room had a look there were eight so out of 100 people <laughs> there was like eight people I said choice cool well at least I'm helping those eight people or oh, how many of them are obese oh one so really out of all those people that I was helping I was only helping one person and that one Maori person wasn't even from my rohe cuz this was in the city of hamilton and then after that class i took a really hard look at, at what i wanted to achieve and what i wanted to do um like i said i was working for big big corporate big gym business and so i was working for someone else and like the sister was saying earlier before you know when you coming back for tangi all the time uh when your kids are sick you know that it really makes it hard for um your employer to keep employing you cuz um they don't understand the concept of marae or they don't understand the concept of tangiana you know their concept of tang tangiana was you know turn up on a sunday for 2 hours and that's it um so we moved home and um like i said my cousin rang me up and says hey Hey, let's start this thing and um and when he said that i had a really good hard look at the the status quo of the exercise industry so at that point all it was was hey you turn up to this place you pay some money 
Um, guy comes, great shoes, says, hey, how's it going? What do you want to do? Oh, I want to get fit. I want to lose fat, whatever. And then they go, here's some machines. See you later. All yours. Uh, those gyms were filled with pretty much people who were already fit. There were mirrors. There were flashing lights, loud music. Uh, and um, people in there who were just doing stuff for themselves, by themselves, and um, it wasn't a an environment that appealed to Māori. So, so therefore, of course, we're failing. Of course, um, if these um, if these buildings are not made for Māori or made with Māori for Kaoru, then why would Māori even decide to go there? So we decided to f- flip it on its head. Say, well, what do what do Māori like to do? Well, you know, we like doing stuff as a community, like doing things together. So we decided that, okay, there's going to be no one-on-one. There's going to be no um, machines. We are going to come in and we're all going to train together. Uh, we started running classes and those classes got started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It got to the point where uh, we had, would get up to like three generations of whānau and um uh, in, in the fuddy, so would get you know, um, your nannies and kuros who would then bring their sons and daughters, who would then bring their kids. <coughs> so, um, so therefore, our philosophies had to change around um, around exercise. We had to start thinking um, that you know, as uh, as a race, as Māori and Pacific Island. Um, you know, certain things come with that. And one is big families, one is kids. And so therefore having rules like, oh, no kids allowed, or, you know, kids can't play with stuff. Um, that's not going to work for us. Uh, so our philosophy has changed from, um, hey, you got to work really, really hard in order to get, you know, strong and that. No, we, we wipe that. And our first port of call will always be, you just got to move. Uh, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care for how long or, or how that works. You just got to move. Um, I don't care if you turn up and you just walk around and watch everybody for half an hour. At least you're doing something because uh, in the state of um, health and well-being at this minute, uh, we're failing. We're absolutely failing. Not because um, we choose to fail. It's because we just don't have the environment set up that, that, that we vibe with, you know, um, our, our whanau are scared to, to come into these, into these, um, gyms. Uh, so one of the big things for us at Patu Kaikoe was to treat it like an urban marae, where not only do we obviously <coughs> jump up and down like monkeys in a shed, yep, we absolutely do that, but we also do other things, you know, we, um, we eat together, we have, um, kaitahi, um, everybody will bring food. Um, we have uh, sports teams where Fano can create sports teams with, with, within the whare and we can go out and do that. Um, we have, like, we don't even <clears throat> have to jump up and down like monkeys in a, in a shed. You know, uh, we meet up every eight weeks and we, as a whānau, we sit there and say, well, what do you fellas want to do? Sometimes they want to be able to do a mud run. Sometimes they just want to um, go out and, and and participate in sport. And sometimes they just want to jump up and down like monkeys in a, a in a shed. So um, I guess one of the hardest things in in this sort of a journey is is because the the paradigm of of exercise and the way we've structured it is so foreign to people. Like we, I give it away for dirt cheap because you know the the economic structure as it is up up north. No, people don't have 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 money. Um, however, um, we we try and create an environment where people just want to keep coming back and they want to just be with their whanau and, you know, and the byproduct of that is that people get fit and healthy. Um, I just hope that um, whanau out there, um, you know, 
take action. Take action. If you've got an idea and you think it's it's good, then yeah, take action. Go and do it. <laughs> Don't think about it too much because then you'll convince yourself not to do it. Um, second one is um, get yourself a team. Surround yourself with people who are going to help you, people who got your back, people who are going to pump you up. So, um, yeah, that's all really I've got to say. Um, I'm not really into this sort of get in front of the the <laughs> Um, the video type thing, but um, I'm going to hand it over to my Mete over here. Um, she's, yeah, so I'll give <laughs> you. So, kia thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, just want to check you can all hear us. Kia ora. Kia ora, ora. ya wikini. <laughs> oh, good, Katie, okay, fine. Um, ko puhanga to hora te maunga, ko manga tawa te awa, uh, ko... Pukirata te marae, ko naitu te aru uh, te hapu, ko Napui te iwi, ko Ana Hiramaya. Tuku ingoa. Um, I am part of ARCO. Um, ARCO has been based in Kaikui for around five years now. Um, I'm really visual, so to, to talk about the kaupapa, I'm going to pull up a screen, so just bear with me while I try to do that. Um, Is that coming up? Kapoa, yeah, we can see that. Kia ora. Kia ora. Aye, so, like I said, ARCO has been around um, about five years. Um, it was co founded by people who were in the design and architecture industry um, and feeling just a little bit deflated at the current state of the industry. Um, I moved home about five or six years ago to figure out how we can use design to really help our, our whanau, our tai tamariki, and our hapori. Um, um, Ako's co-papa is all around helping um, our tai tamariki. Our tai tamariki. For us, it's important that our young people are involved in the design of our communities and have a voice in the future of how their communities, uh, how they look, how they feel, um, and ensuring their voice is heard. Um, you know, give them 10, 15 years, they'll be the ones leading in our community. So it's really important that they're contributing to that future. Uh, so ARCO um, is both a design and architecture studio, uh, but any, any time we get a project, we ensure that we work with uh, the local young people of that community um, to involve them in the design. But we're also um, an education uh, program that works with Tamariki around uh, design through a te ao Māori perspective and mainly working in different schools. These are just some of our programs. Uh, last year we worked with over 2,000 tamariki and community members in the design of their communities. Um, I guess the, the one thing that I want to kind of pass on from this korero, I won't talk too long, but is basically just the importance of engaging our young people in the design of our communities, whether that be an idea, a kaupapa, um, the way our community works, anything that is an important kaupapa should be involving our local young people. So all I'm going to do is just quickly show some pictures and slides of actually the impact of involving our young people in the design. Um, so this here is a, a, um, a basketball court in Kaikohe. Um, it was driven by the community, driven by our local Tai Tamariki that wanted a space and a place to go shoot hoops. Um, and so we were asked to be involved with that. This design was all created with local Tai Tamariki. This is an aerial looking down on it. So it's, you know, it's unique to our community. It talks of kaiko here. Um, and that's kind of the kind of impact you have from involving our young people in the design of projects. Um, Another co-papa we were involved to be um, involved with was the design of our petrol station in Kaikohe. It's um, owned by Napoli. Um, how can we make something as simple as a, a petrol station be unique to our community? So we worked with Te Kora Kaupapa Māori or Kaikohe um, to come up with some designs of what does a petrol station or a space that reflects Napoli look like? So this is just us doing that that papa mahi with them. Um, so this is just some of the result of that process. 
this design was all um, thought up by the Taitamariki from the Kura. Um, it talks about um, the maunga of Napoli. Um, every maunga of Te Pare Tapu in Napoli features in the space. Um, it talks of how Kaikohe got its name. Um, uh, the Taitamariki wanted a space for, it was their idea to have a space for local products to be sold. So that was designed into the, the space. Um, and those local products are now selling um, and it's you know feeding back to our community. So supporting our local businesses. Um, the whare paku that represents being in the nahere, again, all their ideas, um, all Arco does is bring their ideas to life. Um, again, this is some of, so we also worked with two um, of our taitamariki at the kura who were doing um, their final year mahi toi. So this is some of their work that features and actually helped them um, achieve their credits. Uh, Symphony is now employed by ARCO, so it creates opportunities that way um, and supporting our next our next wave of young designers coming up. Um, Bling Bling Toy Marama was a Matariki light -like festival. Again, this has all come from local young people. One of our junior designers uh, kept hearing how our young people felt like Kaikui was too dark. They didn't feel safe at night. How can we bring more light to our streets of Kaikohe? Um, so over 250 tamariki around um, Kaikohe or Kaiho and Morewa contributed um, light art to this, this festival. Um, by including Fano and tamariki in this project meant that um, over three nights, over 2,000 people walked through the Waharoa. And for Kaikui, that's big to bring that many people together. So it's, again, just the more you can include Tai Tamariki in the design of anything, um, there's just so many added benefits. Um, yeah, it was fun. Everyone uh, went home really messy. So we <laughs> sure we had a few angry parents, but um, the impact of that was huge. Um, just quickly, lastly, we were involved with um, the township designs um, of um, eight communities around Te Tai Tokoro. Um, the Kaikui one, um, what came from that and their wants for the streets um, of Kaikohe and the, the township design was we want to make the main street of Kaikohe, we want to make, we want to reinvigorate it. We, we're not happy with the kind of current state of some of the buildings. Um, but from an aspirational point of view, we want to see Te Reo Māori everywhere. So ARCO took it on themselves to bring those ideas and their, their visions to life. Um, this is just an example of some of one of the buildings in Kaikohe. Um, this is uh, working with the Kura again around let's design some large scale installations that talk to um, talk to what Kaikohe is um, and through that process, that creative process, they came out with some um, what kupu they wanted based on different whakatauki. They decided what they want those graphics to look like and what colours should be featured. Again, some of their creative mahi. Um, and then this is one of the buildings, which is um, large, it's huge. So we've, we're working on four buildings now. Uh, again, North Tech have come in and going to be painting the, the base um, of all these buildings. So it's gonna be looking pretty bright and colorful. Um, yeah, so that's all I really want to do is um, through this corridor is really just highlight the value of listening to our Tai Tamariki. Um, what is it that they see for the future and how can we help them through enterprise, through uh, different kaupapa to bring them to life? Um, just some other things I wanted to add there was just mahitahi working together. So if you like the sound of what someone else is doing, go and, you know, um, support them, afi them. Um, working together in the community just, just strengthens the community. Um, I've heard it mentioned a few times earlier, but the importance of tangible outcomes. You're not always going to know the finished thing when you start, but just start, um, create some little tangible outcomes and it can grow from there. And again, I've said it many a time, but just listen to Tamariki and Tai Tamariki. Um, and that's basically all I wanted to say. Uh, kia ora. <laughs> kia ora. Homa te whaki whaki. Ni haro.